You guys know we like making lists here. Well, we got a big one today for you PC gamers. These are the top 35 games coming to PC throughout 2021. The ones we're really paying attention to. There's a lot, so we gotta get going, but just before, just note, games like Overwatch 2, Diablo 4, and Hogwarts Legacy, to name a few, are delayed to 2022. Still, we got a lot, so let's get started off with number 35 and talk about The Day Before. This is a very interesting hybrid style game where at first glance it looks like The Division, but they add some zombies and some MMO elements, and what you have is a really ambitious recipe for something cool. The developers have been pretty forthcoming. They've shown us lots of gameplay. We've seen combat, we've seen working with other players, we've seen fighting off the zombies, we've seen looting in the open environments, and it's kind of like a no brainer. Like, why haven't we gotten a lot more games like this before? One part MMO, one part The Division, one part The Last of Us, kind of mixing a bunch of things together. This has a lot of potential. The initial gameplay trailer made a big splash, so we're keeping an eye on it and we're hoping that it releases this year. Next over at number 34, we have another ambitious game called Manor Lords. This is a medieval strategy game for PC, a genre that I know many PC gamers really love. But this one, of course, has big, huge, large-scale tactical battles, but also city-building elements. So it's a very cool creative marriage of two concepts that PC gamers have been proven to love. Very realistic, medieval, accurate battles, the strategy that comes with that, but mixed with the strategy that comes with building up a settlement, then a town, then a city. That can be a really addicting recipe if you ask me. It is going to be releasing seemingly in early access this year and we're excited to see what comes of it. Next over at number 33 we have Outriders, billed as another kind of uh, third person shooter action centric next generation game. This was pushed but now we know we're going to see it in 2021 and it's going to have a home on PC as well as next gen consoles and it seems interesting. It's from the developers, people can fly, they have a track record for making great shooters. Bulletstorm is still one of my all time favorites and this one, although at a glance it looks generic, the more you watch the gameplay, uh, the kind of abilities that the characters have and just third person action does make it stand out. We're hoping that the fact that this game gets a little more time in the oven is just going to make it even more special. This is currently slated to release on Steam April 1st, 2021. Next up at number 32, we have Lego Star Wars, the Skywalker Saga, which looks like it could potentially be the definitive Lego Star Wars game. This thing is going to cover a lot of ground, spanning a lot of Star Wars movies, with a big new emphasis on just big action moments, cinematic stuff, comedy, really shockingly great visuals. The Lego games always really surprise me like that, and it seems like they're possibly trying to capitalize on just the amount of love there is for the Lego Star Wars series. There's nostalgia there, of course, Course, but I'm curious to see if this new one can really back it up in the gameplay department and just be a ton of fun. Early previews and press who've gotten their hands on it have said good things about it. This one has been pushed and delayed quite a bit, but we're looking forward to checking it out this year. Next over at number 31, we have Humankind, which is billed as a historical strategy game, which looks downright beautiful. It's being published by Sega and developed by Amplitude Studios, the folks behind Endless Space. And this looks like, almost like something that can compete with civilization, but bring some new and exciting ideas to the table. It's got a little bit of a different flair to it, a different vibe to it. And if you ask me, as somebody who loves civilization, I would love to see that big video game franchise challenged by a little guy. There's an emphasis on history here and changing it and cultures and kind of molding them together to create like your own new custom thing. And I'm just excited to see where that can go in the gameplay department. As of right now, Humankind is slated for April, 2021. Next over at number 30, we have Chivalry 2. If you like being a medieval dude and going on castle sieges and killing people with swords and pikes and axes, Chivalry 2 looks to really kind of up the action and in their description kind of give you that movie-like experience of just high quality cinematic medieval brutal battles. This is first person and multiplayer focused and we're really excited to see what they can do with this considering Mordhau released on PC and people loved it and it really kind of changed the game. So Chivalry 2 has to really step up. We'll know for sure when it releases summer of 2021. Next at number 29 we have Ghostwire Tokyo. This is an action adventure horror themed game developed by Tango Gameworks and published by Bethesda. It was revealed at E3 2019 and of course made a big splash because Tango Gameworks Gameworks, horror, Shinji Mikami being involved. But interestingly enough, as time has gone on, it's been revealed to be a 
first person game. It seems very creative. It seems wildly out there. Uh, the creative director has actually moved on from the project onto something else. We're wondering if there's a direction shift. Still, the concept seems pretty cool dealing with ghosts in a neon lit Tokyo, but we still wanna see a lot more from this game before we get super excited for it. We do know it is releasing October of 2021. Next over at number 28, we have Starfield. Yes, we're putting this on this list just to be hopeful. Is Bethesda's next big RPG, this new IP, this sci-fi epic going to be out this year? We don't know for sure. We know Bethesda is also working on the next Elder Scrolls game, but that's even further off. We know Starfield is coming first. Is it gonna be 2021? Who knows, dude? This is like the one big question mark on this list, but we wanted to include it because if it does come out in 2021, that could make for a pretty good holiday season. Next over at number 27, we have Senua's Saga Hellblade 2. This is the sequel to the absolutely fantastic Hellblade Senua's Sacrifice. And from what we've seen of this game, it looks downright incredible. The story looks to be taking an even darker turn considering where the first story went. Uh, we've seen some insane visuals. It has been a highlight of the Xbox Series X and that whole thing, but we know that it is also releasing on PC and we're really excited to get our hands on it. We're guessing and we're also hoping that this game gets it's dated for 2021 pretty soon. But next over at number 26, we have Everspace 2. This released early in 2021, so of course we had to include it because it has taken the world by storm. It is a deep, fun, engaging, lengthy, single player, first person space experience. If you love exploring space, crafting, engaging in RPG stats and elements like that, Everspace 2 looks to keep you busy for a long time. It has been very well received, and technically I believe it's still in early access, so there's more to come. It's not really totally like any of the games I'm about to mention, but if you're into anything from Elite Dangerous to No Man's Sky, you might really owe it to yourself to check out Everspace 2. Next over at number 25, we have Evil Genius 2 World Domination. This is being developed and published by Rebellion, the people behind the very awesome Sniper Elite series. These games are very interesting and very creative, where Tropico takes a nice spin on City Builder, Evil Genius does the same type of evil spin on you being a villain, building out your secret lair. Whether it's like a top secret laboratory on an island or just an evil dungeon in a volcano, the possibilities are endless and it's just really cool and it's a refreshing idea. The first one was, and we're hoping the second one continues that trend. Evil Genius 2 World Domination is releasing on March 30th, 2021. Next over at number 24, we have The Ascent. This is a single player and co-op focused top-down RPG shooter. The action seems pretty nuts, especially with some really cool effects going on and just the world design itself because it is cyberpunk inspired. Not inspired by cyberpunk the game, but cyberpunk the concept. That's a very important distinction. So if you did get a taste of cyberpunk with that game that we've all been talking about so much and you want something a little bit different here that takes that concept even further, The Ascent might be a fun action romp that you might want to consider in 2021. Next at number 23, we have The Outlast Trials. This is the next Outlast game. It is, however, a prequel based around Cold War experiments. And honestly, it's been pretty mysterious since this game has been announced, but we're excited to see what Red Barrels comes up with. They kind of always deliver on the Outlast department. And if they're branching out and trying something a little bit new and a little bit different, we're definitely going to be willing to give it a shot. The Outlast Trials is coming sometime in 2021. Now down to number 22, speaking of another one that was announced a long time ago, we have Scorn. This is that horror first person shooter game very much inspired by the art of H.R. Giger. On consoles, it is exclusive to Xbox Series X and S, but on PC, we're gonna be able to play it. That's where I'm probably gonna play it because it very much looks like a game focused on visuals and atmosphere. This is a game I wanna get right up in my monitor screen with some good headphones. The graphics turned up to 11 and then I just get spooked. They've been working on this game for a really long time. It's still labeled TBD, but we're thinking 2021 one is finally going to be the year considering they've started to roll out marketing again. Next over at number 21, we have Prince of Persia, The Sands of Time Remake. Now this game was announced for all platforms in 2020 amid some skepticism by fans. Our first look at the game, it looked a little rough if I'm being honest, but I think a remake of Sands of Time, a game that necessarily doesn't need a remake, but hey, you know, a new reason to play it, a new shiny coat of paint. The game really needs the love it deserves and we wanna give Ubisoft and the developers specifically making this game props for deciding to delay it for quite a bit. We don't wanna rush them. I think a game like Sands of Time needs all that love and care, but there is a possibility we could see it in 2020, 2021. So we wanted to mention it. Now down to number 20, we have Little Nightmares 2. 
this game released in early February, and we just want to say, man, definitely go play it. If you love short but fun horror experiences like Limbo or Inside, Little Nightmares 2 really scratches that itch and then some. Uh, not to mention the first game as well. It plays with horror tropes you've seen before in interesting new ways. It has some fun puzzle platforming, some incredible visuals. Definitely play it with headphones. It's not the scariest game, but it is an unsettling game, and you should check it out. Next, down to 19, we have State of Decay 3, a game that, to be honest, to this day, we still don't know too much about. We know it's coming exclusively on consoles to Xbox, but we're gonna get it on PC. And all we've gotten is a cinematic trailer with a winter theme and a hint of zombie animals. That's all we got. Honestly, like I've said before, State of Decay 2 has come a long way. Undead Labs has really kind of played with this type of genre that they've kind of come up with, and we're excited to see where they take it with a third outing. Next over at number 18, we have Everwild. This is the new Rare game. This is an open world RPG with a fantasy style and a new world they're building that we've never really seen before. And it looks cool. It looks creative, but it's also early. We're just excited to see what Rare can do with this. They've been obviously very busy on something like Sea of Thieves. It's nice to see them branch out and do some sort of cool, worldly, fantasy, chill, lo-fi world game. It's been pretty secretive, but we're hoping that we see this game in 2021. Next, down to number 17, we have Stalker 2. We're so excited to get a follow-up to the Stalker games because these are like the PC gamers game. What this game originally did back in the day with RPG elements, first-person elements, survival elements, and post-apocalyptic elements. I just had elements a lot, but what it does with all of these things was awesome. And now there are so many other games that take these ideas and run with them. We're excited to see what Stalker 2 can do to move it forward again. We've got some little glimpses here and there. The game's been in development for quite some time. Uh, we've got some looks and some showcases at the graphics, but as of the time of making this video, we don't know too much. Still, it is definitely one to keep an eye on. Next at number 16, Atomic Heart, the Bioshock-inspired game, but with a weird Soviet sci-fi spin. We've been keeping our eye on this one for a while, and we think 2021 is definitely gonna be the year. Lots of melee combat, but lots of stuff that's gonna make you think. Incredible environment and level and enemy design, not to mention more of an open world design, which is pretty interesting. We're betting on Atomic Heart. We think it has a lot of potential. We've made videos on it before, and it is slightly for a release on all the major consoles and PC worldwide this year. Down to number 15, Biomutant, a game that we've been following for a long time, finally has a release date. After many delays and it getting pushed, it's finally releasing May 25th, 2021. This is an open world action adventure RPG where you build out your own little critter character, adventure through an open world, find loot, and fight enemies with guns and swords. To be honest, it sounds like a lot of elements we've seen in previous games, but just the presentation and the real concept of it seems unique and a bit different and we're always itching for different, so we're definitely gonna be playing this one. But down to number 14, we have Age of Empires 4. This one has been silent for a while, but this is the big one. We know Xbox and Microsoft are developing this. We know we're gonna be able to play it on PC. Uh, we know that they've also been spending a lot of time releasing and remastering the old games, most specifically recently Age of Empires 1 and 2. What is this new one gonna bring? How big is it gonna be? How crazy is it? As of the time of making this video, we haven't heard too much new about it, but we're still excited. Microsoft has still said that they are still working on it. There is a community behind this game. We're just curious to see when it comes out. We're thinking 2021 and it could be awesome. Now down to number 13, we have Ruined King. This is that League of Legends RPG. Essentially what you do in this game is engage in a story in this world. You gather up a bunch of League of Legends champions and go on a quest with turn-based RPG combat. You get the art style, you get the lore, you get the world building, you get the atmosphere of League of Legends, but with a cool new turn-based RPG presentation. I'm really curious to see what they can do with this one. Riot, of course, has been very focused on specifically League of Legends, but now they are branching out quite a bit. And I'm just excited to see if they can introduce awesome genres of games to League of Legends fans who typically only play one or two types of things. Ruin King, a League of Legends story, could be that when it releases in 2021. Next at number 12, we have Vampire, The Masquerade, Bloodlines 2. This one, I'll admit, has kind of been delayed quite a bit. There's been some behind the scenes stuff with people working on the game leaving. But putting all that aside, if this does come out this year, it could be pretty awesome. The trailers we've seen, the little glimpses of gameplay we've seen, uh, just the pedigree alone, the previous game. There's a lot riding on Vampire the Masquerade Bloodlines 2. It is, of course, the sequel to a really excellent first-person PC RPG. We don't get enough of those, especially not ones with vampires in it. We're hoping this one still squeaks by in 2021. 
Now, over at number 11, we have Resident Evil Village. We're going from vampires to werewolves. This is the follow-up to Resident Evil 7, of course, where you once again are playing in first person as Ethan Winters. It looks like something is up where your kid is stolen for some sort of ritual. You go to a weird village. There are evil vampire ladies and bug ladies, and they're all hot. This game just looks absolutely insane. From the action, to the horror elements, to the inventory management, to the survival elements, everything about it is what I want as a Resident Evil fan, especially considering we get to see the real Chris Redfield again, but he's up to no good. We can't wait to see where this mystery goes. Honestly, we've talked this game to death, but it's releasing May 7th, 2021. Down to number 10, we have New World. This is a new MMORPG developed by Amazon Game Studios. You've probably heard about this one. We've talked about it in the past. It did have a 2020 release date, but it was pushed. The concepts seem really cool. The art style seems really cool. We're just curious to see what they can do with this, especially because Amazon Game Studios is a bit new and their first attempt is an MMORPG, something that is a genre that is notoriously hard to crack, not to mention for a newcomer on the block. Still, we're excited to see where it goes. We're excited to see what Amazon money can do. We're excited to see what their engine can do because their previous attempts have kind of fizzled out a little bit. New World is coming in 2021 and we're gonna jump in definitely. Next over at number nine, we have Gotham Knights. This is an interesting new Arkham style game that technically does not take place in the Arkham universe, but instead focuses on a new story and world where Bruce Wayne and Commissioner Gordon are dead. And it's up to the Bat family to team together, punch a bunch of dudes, engage in RPG elements and loot, and save the day in an open world Gotham. This honestly looks kind of cool. Once you can get over the fact that Batman isn't in the game, which was hard, and once you get over the fact that it is built a little bit around co-op, the actual moment to moment combat, the traversal, and some of the story stuff and presentation seems pretty enticing to me as a Batman fan. To be honest, not enough people have been exposed to the Bat family and the cool stories that come with it. WB Games Montreal is releasing this in 2021. Next at number eight, we have Elden Ring, the new From Software open world RPG, which was announced and J.R.R. Martin is helping work on the story and we don't know anything else about it and it's driving the internet insane. Everybody is of course clamoring for the next From Software game. The developers behind Sekiro, Shadows Die Twice, Dark Souls, Bloodborne, you name it. This has potential. Obviously, maybe you should bet on it, but we're still really clamoring for some information. They've gone quiet, dude. Hopefully they just come out and say, hey, here's the game, here's a trailer, it's out next month. We would love to see that in 2021. It would make us very happy. Down to number seven though, we have Halo Infinite. This is a game that was slated to release in 2020 for PC and the launch of the new Xbox Series X and it was delayed. A lot of people were not happy with the initial game reveal. So the developers have gone back to the table to really work on the game and we're thinking that it's gonna definitely show up in 2021. The single player campaign is of course focusing on larger environments and of course we're also getting a bunch of multiplayer. But the ball is really in Halo's court. Since Halo was king, a lot of new games have come out and really dominated and really captured mainstream audiences. And it's up to Halo to kind of bring things back to basics and maybe bring everyone on board again. Can they do it? We don't know, but we're definitely sitting from the sidelines eating popcorn. Down to number six, we have Back 4 Blood. This is a co-op first person shooter from the people behind Left 4 Dead. Yeah, man. So basically, if you heard that and you thought of something, yes, that's exactly what you're getting. Now, Turtle Rock Studios, the developers, did previously work on Evolve, but we're definitely thinking this time around they get their own spin on things and they get to go back to what they really excel at, and that is shooting zombies with some friends. The weapons look cool, the gore looks cool, the effects look cool. And to be honest, I think this is just a game we need right now. And it's releasing on all the consoles and PC, June 18th, 2021. Down to number five, we have Deathloop. This is a Bethesda published game that is a PlayStation 5 console exclusive that is also on PC. And honestly, this type of game we think belongs on PC because it's developed by Arcane, the folks behind Dishonored and Prey. We like the concepts, we like the flow of their game, so we're really excited to see what they can do with the Deathloop considering the premise is very interesting. There's kind of this endless fight, this battle between two assassins, kind of a repeating time loop Groundhog's type of thing and we've seen a lot of things that really really caught our eye like cool weapon designs character and enemy designs world designs just an interesting sci-fi spin and vibe that we're itching to play especially with a mouse and keyboard also we just love action and adventure games so there's that too we're gonna be playing this may 21st 2021 
Now down to number four, another game that released on PC not too long ago is Hitman 3. This is the third game in the Hitman World of Assassination trilogy, where they kind of blew up the level design and opened up the freedom and let you kind of do whatever you want in these endlessly replayable sandbox levels. And we think this third entry is where it all really clicks and come together. As an old school, very traditional Hitman fan, it took a long time for these games to win me over and Hitman 3 finally did. There's a little bit of story agency that they inject into the levels, but they are still creative and fun and endlessly replayable where you just kind of make your own memorable moments and it's incredibly satisfying. Not to mention that, it also just looks downright insane on PC. Consider getting it, turning up those graphics because wow, it is something else. IO Interactive are just great developers and we're excited to see what they're gonna do next after this. Now down to number three, we have Far Cry 6, a game that has been delayed, but we think we're gonna see at some point in 2021. This is a first person action, open world, first person shooter, very much like any other Far Cry game, and it takes place on a fictional Caribbean island of Yara, apparently loosely inspired by Cuba because there is some civil unrest. You engage in that and you take that fight to the dictator who is played none other than Giancarlo Esposito, AKA Moff Gideon, AKA Gustavo Fring, AKA the perfect villain. We're really excited to see where this goes, including the way guerrilla tactics are implemented and the game world having its own city within it, the biggest that we've seen in a Far Cry game. Is this gonna be enough to finally make Far Cry break from the formula again like Far Cry 3 did? Is this new Far Cry 6 gonna feel revolutionary? No pun intended. We'll find out for sure when we get our hands on it, either the second quarter or the third quarter of 2021. Down to number two, we have Dying Light 2, another game we have been foaming at the mouth for for so long, another game that has been delayed quite a bit, but considering Dying Light was a fantastic experience on PC that was supported for years and years, you should still pick it up because there's so much good content in there. Dying Light 2 really blows it out of the water with how your decisions shape the world, with how they focused on storytelling and world building this time around. The potential for this game seems really high. We still argue that the original Dying Light is extremely underrated. And with the way Dying Light 2 seems to be blowing things out of the water, like I said, this could reach like game of the year levels. Is that ambitious on my part? I don't know. I just really like zombie parkour games. The developer publisher Techland has admittedly been pretty quiet on this game for a while, but we're expecting to see it in 2021. Now down to number one, we have Valheim. Uh, we're mentioning it at number one just because as of the time of making this video, it is blowing up and it seems to be pretty popular for the right reasons. It's a high quality survival game. Every so often, every year or so, a new survival game hits the market and takes the PC crowd by storm. And Valheim is the newest one because it has this cool Viking theme, some creative building, some enemy encounters, a focus on PVE, and just a really interesting and weird visual design. It's proved divisive, but we think it's really cool. It's already sold like over 2 million units. It is in early access, but doesn't feel like half-assed early access. And frankly, as people who are a little skeptical of just the endless pile of survival games, we have found this one pretty fun so far. Those are all the 2021 PC games to pay attention to. Those are 35, but we do have two bonuses for you. We also have the Mass Effect Legendary Edition, of course, and Near Replicant version 1.2247444, etc., etc. You get the gist. We'd love to know what you guys are playing on PC in 2021, what you're expecting to pick up. Please let us know in the comments because we tailor our videos around what games interest you guys. Let's talk about anything PC gaming in 2021. If you enjoyed this video though, maybe you learned something, clicking the like button is the best way you can help us out. And if you're new, maybe consider subscribing, hit that notification bell because we put out videos every single day. But as always, thanks for watching. We'll see you guys next time.